Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and um, what we've got here is my little my boogie board <laughs> um, which I use sometimes just to make little notes for myself just so I have uh, uh, accurate information to provide when I'm doing my videos. Um, so in preparation for today's feeding I just figured I'd take some notes to um, to get myself a little bit better handle on what it is that we're dealing with here today. And um, basically I, um, my plan is to today deal with the feeding of my European Nightcrawlers, ENCs, and my African Nightcrawlers, ANCs. And um, it was not too long ago that I uh, had only two containers with Nightcrawlers. I had my 525-day Vermibag Mini and my 44-day-old Vermibag Tote, which were my um, only game in town when it come to ENCs. I had only... ENCs in one container, ANCs in the other container, which had always bothered me a little bit. I always felt like I should really have some sort of kind of a backup plan for these night crawlers. So over the past couple of weeks, I've made an effort to try to get a couple new bins online. And uh, one of the new bins that I've recently um, gotten online was a secondary African night crawler bin, which is less than three weeks old now at the age of 19 days old. And um, the last time that bin was fed was nine days ago. That was really just its second feeding, if you count the, the food that was built into the bin where the bin was constructed originally. So um, today, that's going to be its third feeding for the, uh, the Vermibag Tote. It's actually a week since it was last fed, and that's going to be its seventh feeding. And with the, uh, the European Nightcrawlers, you can see that this 525-day-old uh, Vermibag Tote, it's a fairly large system. This thing's been around forever, so, you know over a year it's not surprising that it's uh its number of feedings are already um 64 at this point today is going to be its 65th feeding it too was last fed seven days ago and the newest of my containers is this uh this enc container which at this point is only three days old and even though it's a fairly young bin the only feeding that it's received was the food that was included in its original build um, that's the asterisk there to show that I've not actually fed this bin other than the food that was included in the construction of the bin. And even though um, that last feeding was really just whatever food was part of the bin when I built it, that was at this point three days ago, which is, you know, in sync with its age at this point. And um, today I'm actually feeding all of these Nightcrawler bins at once. And, um, you know, I guess since the, the new bin was just put into service not too long ago and I think I built that bin with a fair bit of food I'm gonna only put one little food bundle into that and I'm gonna put two food bundles into the all the other ones so what, I guess when I refer to food bundles what I'm really referring to are um, taking the food that the, the worms are going to get and placing it into a little uh, wrapper in this case we're just using newspaper as the wrapper and since I've got three bins that are going to need two bundles and one that's going to need one bundle I've got to create seven little food bundles for these little guys. So a little different from what I usually do, I figured I would just try to pre-assemble all these food bundles now. And, uh, and then when it comes to feeding, I don't have to monkey around with building these things. I could just drop them right in and the feeding will be done. So I'm going to just go ahead and build these really quick, these seven little food bundles. And uh, then we can get to work. Oh yeah, and if I don't forget, I've also got this uh, used coffee here that I'm going to include with the feedings as well. So when I'm dropping in the food bundles, we'll try to remember to put the coffee in. Although sometimes since I kind of put that off to the side, I sometimes I forget to include the coffee with the feedings. <laughs> so hopefully I don't forget. Um, so here we go. I've definitely taken a shine to this technique of bundling the food into little paper wrappers um, because one thing I always felt like I was a little bit shy on when it came to um, giving to my bins, I always felt like I was a little shy on providing my bins with an ample amount of bedding material to go in conjunction with the food that they're given. So I, I always seemed to give them, you know, ample quantities of food, but a lot of times it just seemed like I was not giving them enough um, paper or leafy matter or, you know, whatever it is that I might be using as bedding at the time. So by using these paper bundles, I, um, I pretty much ensure that I'm always including enough carbon-based food 
and at the same time bedding materials in, in along with the food at each feeding. And then I don't feel like I'm skimping or forgetting anything. Not too long ago I had also kind of adopted this concept of trying to keep track of how much the feedings were and trying to come up with sort of a standard measure. And uh, I always found that maybe the easiest way to um, measure the amount of food that I was given, um, perhaps not very accurate, but at least semi-consistent, was to, was to use the concept of a handful. Basically, you know, sometimes I would give my bins two handfuls of food. Sometimes if I was generous, I'd give them what amounted to what looked like maybe three handfuls of food. But I was generally using a handful as sort of a measure and in most cases you know applying somewhere between two and three handfuls um, at each feeding so uh, by doing these bundles too I feel like I've pretty much um, managed to retain that measurement method and um, provide a, a semi-consistent measuring approach when it comes to feeding so now Three of the bins are going to get two of these each, and one of them is going to get only one. So let's head on over to the bins and start feeding. Our last check-in in this Vermi Bag Mini with these European night crawlers was not a feeding. It was actually to extract worms from the container. And um, what I did after I had pulled the worms out was that I used some of these freshly fallen autumn leaves to cover up with here. Just thought it would add a little splash of color the next time we came in here to work on this bin. So I'm going to just set these aside so we could use them to cover up with again at the end. I guess what I was curious of was if they would have any sort of a moisture content to them since they were pretty dry when I placed them in here. I wondered if the moisture coming up out of the bin, getting caught on the plastic that was covering all of this, would cause these to pick up some moisture. And it does seem like they did pick up a little bit of moisture, so I was just curious if that would happen. So for now, we're just going to probably keep them on top as we found them as sort of a little bit of a decoration. And at some point, we might just end up blending them into the material, which would be just as good as well. So I've got, um, I don't know, I've got a little bit of a rearranged setup here. The last time when I was in here pulling out worms, um, another thing that I did was I took that opportunity to kind of dig down deep into the bed and try to see if I can locate any large chunks of food that might still be lingering down deep within this bin. Um, trying to look ahead a little bit to the um, possibility of maybe harvesting this container someday. And my hope had been that um, if there was some large stuff sitting down deep within the bin that I'd be able to pull it out so that at some day when I do harvest this container, I'm not going to have a bunch of large chunks of uncomposted food or you know, large bundles of um, bedding material flying out the bottom. What I'd really like to have come out the bottom when I do finally harvest this system is just nice, clean compost and compost only. So um, I, I don't think I found too much stuff when I was doing that probe down deep into the bin, but I, I do recall pulling at least a few items out. So um, I don't want to go down too deep. I did, um, I did feed with these paper bundles most recently and since it was only three days ago when we were in here to pull worms out to start off that other European nightcrawler container, I don't think we're going to see much change since then and at that time those food bundles looked like they might have still been somewhat intact. I mean the paper was somewhat intact. I don't know if the contents of each paper bundle had been raided yet or if the, you know, contents had been uh, eaten yet so we're gonna check those out I guess see how the food supply in those is holding up after a week's time and I guess I'm also kind of glad to see that you know just looking through the material since I did a fairly good size extraction of worms on two occasions in the past couple weeks um, I you know I've depleted the number of worms in this container by a bunch so I am glad to see that they're still kind of all over the place when I start picking through here. I was a little bit worried that I might have reduced their numbers um, drastically, but I don't think that's really the case. I think 
I think this bin does have a pretty good population in it. So now here's one of the bundles. The last time we encountered these bundles, we didn't really um, look too closely at them. We just put them aside. The other thing that we found besides these two large bundles was this leftover chunk of cantaloupe rind. But um, I guess we could take a little peek in here, see how the um, contents of this feeding bundle are holding up. There's still some leafy material in here and not a really any worms to be seen within it, which is a little bit unusual. I would have thought that there'd be a bunch of worms right there within the, uh, the food bundle, gobbling it up. So I wonder what the other one's going to look like. There should have been another one in here too. I believe I put them side by side, so the other one should be right here next to it. Let's see what it looks like if we peek inside this one. Here, um, seeing a little bit of worm infiltration. Definitely better than the other one. The stuff is getting gooey, that's for sure. Pretty nasty. So I'm kind of glad that the paper is there too, because the paper is um, at this point going to get all soaked by the gooiness of this leftover food. And, um, and the paper will become just as appealing a food item for them as the food itself. And that'll, be, that'll all get consumed probably pretty quickly at this point, I would think. Now that it's had a week to sort of get, you know, primed for consumption. So I have opened up a pretty good size hole here. It's only because we do need to return these food bits, as well as the new um, feeding that we're adding now. So I just want to make sure we've left ourselves, left ourselves ample room to accomplish that. And I think we have. I think this is a good enough sized hole for that to work now. So, like I said, this uh, container is getting two bundles of food today. And I guess that's to complement this existing old bundle number one and old bundle number two from a week ago. As well as um, this piece of cantaloupe rind, which might have actually been from a feeding even prior to that. And then all these other little older food items that we stumbled on as we made our way down. These um, old mango seeds, and I believe this is actually a, what remains of a tiny corn cob. <laughs> it's just amazing how it sort of shrinks down in size. So. All right, just want to make sure we've got all the food bits that we've intended to put down in here um, in place before we start covering up. But let's not also forget the, um, the coffee. Coffee just somehow slips my mind occasionally. So I put it actually right over here next to me so I don't forget. All right, that's a nice feeding and I think we've got plenty of material to cover up with so as to, all right. So as to ensure that the um, the feeding is not exposed to the air, it's not going to become a draw for passerby insects that might sense it as an opportunity to get a free meal and try to um, limit what's on the top surface to just mostly castings only. But you can tell this castings only, quote unquote castings only, is littered with a variety of different who knows what's. Um, I think that was the other reason I wanted to include that top covering of leaves as well. Just as a little bit of protection to hopefully deter any sort of potential um, intruders into the bin from going down in there to try to get a free meal. I, I like the way this container is looking. The material in it's really nice. I think the population is still holding up despite the extractions of worms recently done. And um, now we've given it enough food to keep it going another week or more. So I'm thinking maybe we just do the other ENC container and check out how the European night crawlers and the other newest of my containers is doing and give them their feeding. Remember we're only going to give that one one bundle so I'm going to get over there and, uh, and feed them now. Alright so now with this other European night crawler container we're going from my very oldest bin to the newest bin which like I said earlier is only three days old at this point and even though it's only three days old I figured what the heck it'll give us a reason to check in to see how things are progressing even after a short period of time. We'll also be able to at least add one little food bundle to what's in there already and maybe it'll kind of um, focus the congregation of worms into a single spot so that we can check them out more easily the next time we come in here to check on the bin. Um, and I guess besides all of that we'll also be sort of synchronizing its feeding with the other night crawler bins so that if we choose to do so we can maybe continue doing um, sort of nightcrawler day, you know, feed all the nightcrawler 
containers on the same day at once. So this um this bin does have a couple little worms hanging out on the top surface, enjoying whatever moisture might be um trying to evaporate and condensing back down. This leaf, for example, right here is quite damp from having been touching the the paper that was on top of it. And the paper itself, as you saw, was really wet. That just has tons and tons of moisture on it. And um, I'm not going to do too much, you know, in here other than throwing the food in. There's, I would not expect to see worms in any one particular spot within this container since, uh, like I said, it was set up um, not too long ago and occupied not too long ago by worms. And it's um, it should be currently taking advantage of whatever foods were used to build the bin originally, which... Um, which would have been placed in, you know, all areas throughout the bin. Even though I typically, in my normal feedings, place food right down the middle for the worms. When I originally build the bins, the bins usually have food scattered all over the place within them. So um, even though most feedings are always down the middle, and we always know to look back there to see how that last feeding was progressing, it's not the case with my newest bins. Um, although in this case, down the middle, we are seeing a pretty good number of worms all hanging out. Must have taken a shine to some food item over there, which is kind of neat. So I'm thinking before we actually plop that food bundle in, we'll take, take another little glimpse over on this edge to see how things are looking. For me, the fact that there's worms, you know, right out there on the very edge of the container near the corners tells me that I've not really allowed any um, portion of the bin to be subject to a lot of evaporation and drying. And that piece of plastic you saw covering things in the beginning, you noticed it did go all the way edge to edge. Those are nice large, um, large bags that do cover up the majority of most of my containers top surfaces. And it might even, you know, make you think, hey, doesn't a bin need airflow? And it does, definitely needs airflow. And it even makes you kind of question, you know, how does the airflow occur with um, a bag that seems to just be more or less uh, edge to edge on the container. And I'll tell you, I don't know the answer to that question. It's pretty interesting because, you know I, know, I know it's not sealed tight. So, I mean, if there was any sort of pressure of any kind, it would easily blow past the, um, you know, the edges of the plastic that's going around. But, um... But, you know, I don't know, Is with a piece of plastic, there's really no opportunity for any sort of airflow whatsoever. Um, not that any sort of pressure going in or out would ever occur from anything. Um, but still, there, there does seem to be ample air in all of my bins, even the ones that have plastic coverings going edge to edge around the entire container. So I've, um, I've wondered about that oftentimes, you know. I know that a good, a good healthy airflow um, good healthy um, oxygen supply for the worms is important, but, um, but when I've got the coverings going all the way around like that, it does make me wonder, how does that airflow actually occur? You know, I'm not trying to do something that seems like it would have um, negative effects. It just seems sensible to try to cover it up as best I can, but still, you know, kind of leaves me wondering, how is it that... Uh, how is it that the bin is getting enough air to maintain its kind of healthy atmosphere, even with all that plastic covering it in all directions? I mean, I believe I'm just going to continue doing it that way. I've, I've seen no reason to not do it that way. And I definitely like the, um, the moisture retention results that I get when I do it that way. So I like, I like doing it. Um, but if anyone knows, you know, how it is that the airflow is occurring in a bin that's covered is um, thoroughly is mine and I'd be curious to hear you know what I'm adding here most of you probably know but if you don't it's uh, it's the form of grit that worms need to, in order to eat their food and you know worms could utilize sand or crushed shells or um, you know you name it whatever to um, process the food that they eat in their gizzards just needs to be some sort of really fine, really coarse substance. I'm using pulverized eggshell in this case. And if you, you know, if you're familiar with how birds um, 
break down their food, it's very similar. They too have gizzards, same as worms. And it's not, you know, it's not a breakdown of food using stomach acids the way we humans do. It's more of a mechanical kind of crushing and grinding of the food within their gizzards. The gizzards just being a muscular organ which uh, applies pressure to, you know, grind the food that they're eating up against the grit that they've consumed alongside the food. And that enables them to, you know, extract the nourishment that they need out of the food that they're eating. But just in a slightly different way than you and I do. All right, so I like the way things look here in my newest bin, my secondary European Nightcrawler tub. And we've now given them a pretty pretty good little feeding. I, I think you might have seen it as we were going through. There were chunks of this and that in there, remnants of the food that was used to build the bin originally. So I think combined with this most recent feeding that we just put in now, this bin should be good for another little while longer. All right, let's move on to the, uh, to the African night crawlers. Okay, the African night crawlers up until very recently uh, occupied only this container. This container is also a vermi bag. It's not a vermi bag mini like the first one we looked at. This is a vermi bag tote. And the vermi bag tote is designed to sit within, I guess, it, I guess by design it was meant to sit within a tote container, but here we're running it within a bus box. I don't think there's a great deal of difference. I don't think it's an available container anymore. I don't think I saw it on the vermi bag website, so it might not even be um, manufactured anymore, but I've had this vermi bag for about the same time as, um, as the vermi bag mini, except for a little period of time this was out of service, so it was not being used, uh, unlike the vermi bag mini that's been just going steady for 525 days. Um, I ran these African night crawlers in this bin, and then for a while I ran them in another container for a short period of time, and then I've recently, more recently moved them back in. So during that time, the African night crawlers were in that other, other container. This vermi bag tote received a little bit of a break. But now I'm back in here running it um, a little differently than before. Um, I did not run it within the tub the way it is in here now. It actually sat in a wooden frame, and it received a lot more airflow that way. So I think by running it within the plastic container, it's going to be able to hold on to its moisture a lot better. So I won't have to worry so much about it drying out. Alright, 44 days since this bin was populated with the African night crawlers. Just trying to get a sense of how things look around the edge. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, around the edge was always where I um, would be able to tell if things seemed a little overly dry, but that's certainly not the case here. Things seem quite nice. And I mean, just the presence of worms right there on the very edge, too, is a good indicator to let you know that the moisture levels there are um, sufficient to keep the worms comfortable. So let's just go ahead and start stacking things up here. I believe that here, too, we... Um, carrot I dropped earlier when I was making the food bundles. I just threw it in here. Um, here, too, we had applied food bundles, but in this case, I think it was quite a number of food bundles that I had put in here. Was it three? I thought there was one bin where I had actually placed four of these food bundles in here, but no, it looks like two. Okay. I guess maybe we take a peek inside of one of them. It looks much the same as the food bundles we saw in the vermi bag mini. I believe we um, placed very similar food into them into all the, the bundles that received food that day. So it's not surprising that this food that we saw in the, uh, in the vermi bag mini is, um, is the same type of food we're seeing in here since they were both fed on the same day a week ago. Okay, but here too we're not really seeing much infiltration yet. Sometimes it's a little bit surprising. You would expect that there'd be, you know, tons of worms hanging out in the food that's been in there for a week. But sometimes um, worms are not able to go directly for the food that you give them. Um, in certain cases, they probably can, you know, like maybe a watermelon or something that's very high sugar and very soft already to begin with. Um, very easy for them to eat as is or very 
quick to get um, occupied with kind of bacteria and microorganisms and fungi, fungi and stuff like that. But other stuff, you know, who knows, maybe this vegetable here was resistant to the infiltration of um, the microorganisms that really get the food breaking down to make it really easy for the worms to get at. But the way the stuff looks at this point, I'm sure that the worms are going to be able to get at it pretty readily, um, pretty fast, so I'm not worried. So here too, we talked about giving this one a couple more of these food bundles. So we'll just drop them right in there, side by side. And um, I guess we'll give this container a little bit of grit too. In the Vermi Bag Mini in the very beginning, I just, you know, I typically assume that my older bins, and that being my oldest bin, I assume that there's already tons and tons of grit from previous feedings um, floating around in that bin. If the worms need it, they should have no problem locating any. But when it comes to these newer bins, like the ones that we're feeding here, this one being only 44 days old, and the last one we just fed only being three days old, I'm always thinking that um, I think I want to just be a little bit more generous on giving them grit to go along with the feedings just in case they need it, just in case what was placed into the bin when I originally built it might be depleted already. Um, I just prefer to be a bit more generous on the grit in the beginning and then in time I feel like I could taper off a little bit on the older of my bins. So the, uh, the African night crawlers in this container look pretty nice. The whole bin looks pretty healthy and the material inside feels nice and damp. I definitely like the way things are progressing in here. Another thing that I like to do, and you saw that in my other bins too, is this little piece of paper somewhere between the uh, the material that's in the bed and the plastic that I use to cover up with to hold the moisture down. So I think I'm going to institute that piece of paper situation in here too now. Because it is also kind of fun because the moisture coming up and collecting on this plastic, when it drops down onto that paper right beneath it, it turns it into sort of a haven for worms, so it's always fun to see that when you come back into the bin. All those worms coming up to the surface trying to take advantage of the collecting moisture right there on the surface. All right, so we got two European night crawlers down, one African night crawler bin down. All we've got left is the uh, the newer of the two African night crawler bins, the 19-day-old one. Let's go get that one next. Now, in the case of this bin here, something I've been meaning to check, but I always forget. Uh, you'll notice here, if I hold it up to its side, I, I've actually got one bin within the other because these two bins here are my, my two bins that I have actual um, holes, perforations on the bottom, drainage holes. And I figured, you know, I didn't want material constantly falling out the bottom and littering the, bin that, the bins that might be right beneath them. So one thing I have not done yet was take a peek underneath just to make sure I didn't have some sort of a situation happening and that's good that there's nothing happening down there you can see a few castings had dropped through the hole um, the holes in the upper bin but um but I'm not really seeing anything dropping out the bottom making a mess beneath it which is good and maybe more importantly I'm not seeing any worms that have accidentally made their way in between the two containers um, and then maybe get trapped there and not find their way out. So I think uh, I think this will work. I just wasn't sure and I had not yet checked. So I'm glad I did to make sure that that wasn't really becoming sort of a death trap for the poor wormies. Did the paper go all the way out? Is there some other reason for it being more damp looking on the edges? I'm not sure. Just interesting. Um, here too, I'll, I'll like to take a quick peek to see how things on the far edges are looking, make sure everything's safe and sound and cozy. Like we've been seeing, things look pretty nice and damp and cozy for the worms out on the far edges as well. For a bin that's only, you know, 19 days old, it makes sense for it to still have a large amount of, you know, leafy litter in here and I guess if we go down deeper, we'll probably find still large chunks of cardboard and stuff like that, too. So uh, that's perfectly normal for a bin that's still this young. All of that bedding-type material is still somewhat intact, but also, you know, starting to show signs of a good amount of um, castings getting deposited in between everywhere. So 
that's also a nice sign that you know indicates to us that the worms are kind of cruising around everywhere and finding pretty much everywhere in the bin to be a nice comfortable place to be to inhabit and um, well you know like I said earlier the middle of my bins is typically where I'm feeding which is typically where you're going to find the most worms hanging out the one thing that's going to distinguish then this bin from the other ones we just fed is that it, um, it's been a while longer since this one was last fed. Even though the, um, the three-day-old bin was last fed three days ago, and this is its first feeding after the build of the container. And the, um, the two other ones, the vermi bags, in the case of those, it's been seven days since they were fed. In the case of this one, if you'll remember the little notes that I bought down earlier, in the case of this bin, it's actually been nine days since the last feeding. And I guess that's part of the reason we're starting to see a, you know, a significantly greater infiltration of the food that was given to them than we saw in some of the bins where not quite as much time has elapsed since the food was placed in here. So um, it, always nice, it is always nice to see a good number of worms um, taking advantage of the food that you've given them. But a lot of times you do need to wait for that to occur. A lot of times it's not just going to be, um, you know, give them food one day and come back the next day and find them mobbing it. Um, depending on the kind of food you're adding, uh, at times it could take days, maybe more than a week. You know, who knows? It really depends on, I guess, a number of different things. Probably, number one, the type of food it is that you're giving them because that's probably... Um, going to dictate how quickly the stuff can start breaking down on its own with the microscopic life forms within the bin and um, and then the worms themselves you know maybe if the worms have had nothing else in their bin for a long time they'll you know start making their way into the new food more quickly than if they um, if they've got lots of other feeding options surrounding themselves um, elsewhere in the bin so I mean if you've got a bin where you know, newly added food from only a week ago is already completely mobbed. It might be that you just haven't fed that bin in a long time and, and they're just getting hungry at this point. So, I believe this bin too, still being less than three weeks old, is also fair game for a little um, addition of grit. So I guess it was just really the, the Vermi Bag Mini, the first system that we fed, which is where we did not add grit. Um, I don't remember, did we add coffee to the last bin? I always forget. Something about me always forgetting about the, the coffee. So I'm curious. I really don't even remember at this point, but I'm not going to go back and, you know, try to correct the matter. I'm just going to press on. And if one of the bins didn't get coffee, then so be it. But, um, yeah, I think that's kind of all that we had for today. We, um, we've now got all of my Nightcrawler bins fed. It's kind of cool having four nightcrawler bins at this point. For the longest time, it was always just two, you know. And I would typically feed them at the same time. So it's kind of cool that I finally got all four of them sort of in sync with each other. And I think if I do kind of the, the advanced food prep and the bundles of food are already ready to go and it's really just a matter of, you know, peeking in here to drop in those food bundles, you know, Maybe I can continue feeding all of the Nightcrawler bins at the same time on the same day if, um, you know, if it continues to make sense to do it that way. Sometimes there's reasons to sort of separate things from one another and let them pro proceed and progress uh, individually or um, separately from other things that you've been trying to keep them in sync with. So I guess we'll see, you know, but I guess the possibility exists for us to you know, maybe start handling all the night crawlers on the same on the same day sort of situation, or maybe just you know all the European night crawlers uh, one day, and then all the African night crawlers on another day. We'll just see how it goes. But um, but that's it for today, I guess. I've got a few things I've still got to um clean up around here and put things away, but not too much, luckily. But I'm not going to keep you around for that since that's boring. Um. I'm just going to call it at that, and before I go, though, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your company, and, uh, you know, if you enjoyed the video, as always, please remember to give me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated, and also consider subscribing to the channel, too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day.
Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.